So I've made some pretty good progress with the lathe since my last um, post video. Um, I, kinda, I, I really would like it to be something that I could use. So um, for me, setting up a nice cover, um, display buttons, etc., was key. Um, all the electronics, pulleys, um, belts, etc., are all housed in here, so I don't have to worry about it being a dangerous uh, situation with you know me or anyone else using it. Um, have the emergency switch set up over here, so uh, it's accessible. There were some good ideas of maybe like putting it on the bench, having like a hip switch. But I actually took the whole thing and mounted it on this three-quarter inch um, plywood, and then I also have um, hardwood plywood. Uh, seems pretty solid. And then I also have some um, acrylic um, plastic. I think that's like uh, maybe an eighth of an inch on the bottom to keep the wood um, keep it in good shape. I set up a chip guard. Um, there's a motor cover for the back so that nothing is going to kind of no chips get in there and uh, clog or disrupt anything. This is really accessible um, and I'll basically go over you know I'm going to I'll take you around I'll show you what I've done but uh, but it's coming along the next step will be to do the tailstock and then um, some accessories and I can actually use it as a, as a working lathe to, to maybe do some work. Um, after this I'll do a little demo I have a um, shaft collar, uh, set screw collar that I'll put on here and I'll turn down. It's some type of steel um, that they use. And then um, I'll just take a light cut with the automatic feed lead screw um, drive or whatever and show you how that works. I also um, updated a lot of the software. There were some, some things that I was doing in there that um, that weren't working out. I can actually get the RPM really low, like, you know, 5 RPM or something. Can't really cut. It cuts pretty good at like 30 right now with light cuts and steel. This thing uh, cuts really good um, in aluminum. I'm sure it does really well with wood and plastic as well. So uh, I don't have any aluminum to cut right now, but I'll do, like I said, with the steel. So let me take you around. Um, Alright, so basically. Here's the base with the plastic emergency switch. I have the buttons mounted up here, same that I had with the smaller display, RPM knob, on and off switch, um, case. I tried to make it, the fa you know, very form-fitting guard for the motor. At some point I'm going to put a fan down there to keep it cooler. For the, uh, the the box that holds the driver and all the uh, you know the the power electronics to drive the motor, um, here's the fan. I just kind of have it sticking out to for some good air, and then the uh, outflow of that air comes out that way. Um, I wanted to make everything accessible, so this kind of just flips up on hinges, so I can get right in there. Um, I made a new controller. Um, which is a printed circuit board. At some point I'll put that online, hopefully. So that's basically in there. Um, lots of ribbon cable, stuff like that. I still have to put that up a little bit better, but it's still, it's okay. Um, motor mount, you know, all this stuff set up. Clean this up, put some uh, lacquer on it, and uh, the encoder wheel, I have um, 48 black, 48 white, so 96 transitions now. I'm using a QRD1114 for the um, for the detector. This this encoder wheel is its limit, so uh, I, I I ordered some newer ones that I think um, have a more focused beam. So I'd like to try and go to maybe like uh, you know double that from um, so like 192 or something like that to try and um, get even better performance out of it. But it's doing really well with the uh, 96 transitions on the encoder. Um, this setup for the uh, for the drive is a little bit different. Um, you know, the the regular gingery has the pulleys inside here, um, and this stuff is kind of right up here. But um, since I'm I'm outboard with this pulley, um, I kind of had to finagle it. It's, it's kind of tight, but it works pretty well. Um, I had these extra die cast pulleys that I just kind of used. Um, as you can see from here, I was kind of playing around, just kind of cutting you know, the, the lip off with the lathe um, on the pulleys and that that comes out pretty good. So um, so that's about all for the internals there. 
Um, yeah, and then there's this uh, just the plastic for the the chip shield. And uh, yeah, so we'll close it up. We got a little window back there too, so you can kind of peek in if you want to. Um, let's see. So the software has changed. Um, I know someone had commented that the um, you know hold menu zero the knob etc so I got rid of that you can um, you know set this and leave it to wherever you want it um, like you know I'll do like 300 right now whatever you can set it there when you turn it off turn it back on um, it's like a little cheesy <laughs> message that I sort of anyways uh, it starts paused um, I still have to label these or whatever but uh, you know to start the lead if you go to like the different menus, this is like the pause, the running the pause screen, you know, you can go forward and reverse. Um, basically to drive the motor I'm using a, um, a low side MOSFET driver um, and I use a, a pretty good relay, like a beefy relay to, um, to go reverse, forward, reverse. I also use the relay for braking, so um, when I pause, um, I switch it to, re you know, I, I set the duty to zero and I, I switch it to reverse for a short period of time and that breaks the motor pretty quickly so uh, so that seems to work out without having to use an H-bridge the uh, pick I'm using, I, I think I have like maybe one I.O. line left um, I did, in the new controller, set it up for I2C so that I can add additional picks if I want to set up like a lead screw drive with a uh, stepper motor or even like automate it with um, you know some type of a CNC with a stepper here to do it more intricate stuff. Um, I'm a little concerned with like the uh, the screws on here and backlash and stuff. I mean it's not really. I don't know if it would do too well as a CNC. I'd have to add uh, anti backlash nuts and all that stuff. And I don't know. Maybe if um, if I feel the need to at some point. But anyways, the menus change a little bit. Like I said, this is the paused running you know forward reverse screen. Any time on this main main screen, you can do the left button to, to start it up. So here it goes. It's running, and you can see the lead screw uh, automatic drive going right now. You can take a look in the back, see how the cables are working. Um, so there they are. All right. The box actually quiets it down a little bit too, even though it was pretty quiet before. So there's that. I can trim it down to, you know, let's go down to like 15. You know, I can do like. Mm, you know, so, so there's 15 RPM. Uh, or, yeah, 15, and then we can even go down to, like, 5, which, you know, I, you wouldn't be cutting anything with this, because it just doesn't have the, um, you know, the, the motor isn't applying enough power at this point to, to really do any, like, it'll, it'll move it when I'm holding it, but not with a cutter, so, I mean, that's not practical, really, but it, it works down to there, so, you know, I guess back gearing or something would would allow that, but I can do light cuts at 35 um, RPM. You know, so so that would work. I also um, took advantage of the built-in EE prom in the um, in the pick microcontroller I'm using, which allows me to. Um, here's just like some display. There's the PAD out. You know expected and, and all that stuff, just kind of for my own sanity. Then these are the constants. We can um, adjust the constants. Um, and then um, what I have now is um, I use the EEPROM, the double EEPROM, to, uh, to store the memory, to store the settings in memory um, so that when I turn it off, the uh, the settings will still be there, so let's just show you how that works. I'll turn it off. So at the twelve fifty, I find that when I even getting up to fifteen hundred, sometimes the uh, with that that detector I have doesn't really. Um, 
And I do like the bigger screen. I, I updated it so I could have the RPM display on the right side at all time and stuff like that. So turn it off, turn it back on, and then you can see that the um, see this 30 over one. So all the settings are stored so that I don't have to uh, go into software and reprogram it every time I want to change the constants for the uh, PID control. So that's basically it. Um, next video I'll show you just a little bit of uh, cutting and, um, and that's it. So here I'm going to do a uh, light cut at 35 RPM. Um, the problem I found with this automatic drive that Gingery uh, has uh, set up is that I can't reverse it without reversing the spindle, which, um, you know, I guess is okay, but um, I don't know. It just kind of, you know, if you're taking a rough cut, there's still material, and then it's like feeding it on the, the non cutting edge. So the uh, the automatic's engaged at 35 RPM. The uh, lead screw drives it quite slow. So uh, I might not do a full pass because I'm running out of memory. But um, I'd like to maybe show a faster cut as well. Come on, get on there. So that's a 35 RPM cut that it's making. Um, and that clicking sound, if I increase the encoder wheel, it'll it'll the resolution will get better. So if I can go above 96, it'll be really good. So I'm going to uh, do the cut over again. This is at 35 RPM. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit faster at uh, 300 RPM and then maybe I'll go up to like 800. Um, maybe I'll take a little bit more off with this cut. Uh, there. The other thing I noticed with this the lathe is um, because I have no micrometers on the hand wheels, it's, it's really hard to, to adjust the cutting depth, so I'm going to have to figure something out for that. Um, relatively annoying um, but right. so here we go put a little cutting fluid on there this is 300 rpm Oops. there you go yeah. There you go. Sorry about the camera dropping, but um, I gotta tighten the stand out, stand that I made. But anyways, that little knocking sound was the uh, going over the set screw, which uh, I believe to be a different type of material. Anyways, I'll throw it in reverse, like I said, um, to back it out um, and show you what I mean by uh, by it kind of being. Um, a little sketchy. You know. So, I mean, obviously, I don't know if I'd want to run it in reverse to back it out or anything like that. Like, right. pause it, uh, go forward. All right, so. I'm going to advance it a little bit and then I'll do maybe eight, 800 or something to, uh, you know, try and get a really nice finish. And then that'll be it for this, this quick demo. Um, Alright, so start it up. Put a little more fluid on there. There it goes. So there, there you go. It's pretty smooth. Um, so it can cut at 35, it can cut at uh, 300 and 830, um, you know, 
nice nice chip coming off of there um, pretty good depth of cut I haven't really played with that I think I'll probably be using a lathe mostly to um, cut aluminum and I can definitely take a big hog of a cut out of that so that's that for the